Superman issue 5, Joshua Williamson writing with Jamal Campbell on the R. So after two mixed issues of things mm-hmm. that uh, opinions... I'd say I, I had to catch up on the previous issue. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. I am significantly worse than mixed on that one. And the last, I hated the Lex Luthor stuff in the last I issue. I hated the Lex Luthor stuff. So- and also, there was a there was a page of like oh hey all these adventures you know all these things that we've done together and it was like four panels i'm like each one of those should have been a standalone one shot issue and i would have enjoyed every single one of those more i think we said the same thing pete right like yeah just uh, williamson has this tendency to have nice ideas but then rush through them so much that none of them get a chance to actually breathe uh, upon this issue i'm starting to think that that light story was a lie i think he was working with them and and he realized how far they were going to go, and he's not. And then that's what led to him, you know, doing whatever he did. That, I don't I mean, think he was that's, a slick hero. That's better, but we'll get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. I think just to start off, I will say I like this issue more. I think this issue yeah. worked better. Yes. You know, it was, by and large, it was the story of how Silver Banshee and Jimmy started dating. I thought all that mm-hmm. stuff was, was sweet enough and worked well enough. Um, yeah. The fight obviously looked great. Silver Banshee, like the idea of like our streams being represented with all these ghosts, ghosts. from the Phantom Zone. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I thought that was neat. Um, I thought they actually did a good job of like building up to its payoff, which is effectively that um, Silver Banshee, when they take her down, she screams so loud that she actually pops Clark's ears, and his superhuman's mm-hmm. gone for like not even a long time. Like they, they say at the lab, it'll be a couple of days and it'll be back. It's yep. not a big deal, but it all builds up to lex being in trouble later and lex has been talking to him throughout these issues Mm -hmm. and at the end of the issue he's basically begging superman for help and superman can't hear him so lex potentially is going to think that superman ignored his cries for help yeah and that may draw a bit of a a violent shrift uh yeah between them once again i thought that was well set up and it paid off and it made sense to me um, I, I legit gasped when I got to that page because I'm not thinking like, like I know Lex has been talking to him the whole time. Right. But when Clark talks that he's actually able to enjoy the concert at the end, because he's not, his super hearing's not activated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so he says, I can't hear anything, but what he means is anything outside of the room that he's in. Right. So he's able to focus on, on the moment at hand. And then it cuts to, to Lex in the prison and it gets super breaking bad with him you know with what happens to him um and yeah i, I legit gasped because that's a nice turn because again like, like pete pointed out that's lex is gonna think that superman was ignoring him because he doesn't know superman's hearing has is been blown out yeah i, th- I thought that worked really well because as soon as like he started to be in trouble and he actually because it, it's got it's got the green bubble around it whenever he's trying to mm-hmm. talk to him through the watch or whatever yep. um I, I like. I was like, oh, they've set this up well enough that I immediately get that he's not going to be heard. And I thought, mm-hmm. okay, that was well executed. I understand that it means something for this ending. Yep. So I think as far as issues goes, this is probably the best issue of this book since issue one. Because I, it, Agreed. Yeah. I was going to say the same because I was reading it last night and I wasn't like, usually I'll save Superman for last because that's my guy. But I was like, uh, I'm going to save it. I'll read this before Titans and Nightwing. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, wait, am I just in a better mood? Because I didn't hold this off for last, or was this really that good? So it, it makes me feel good that you guys agree that. I, I don't think it's like a knock out of the park. No, like, but compared to the last issues that we've had, yeah, I think yeah. it's it's like, it's not good enough to like redeem the last few issues. But if mm-hmm. this had been issue two, like this quality, I think would mm-hmm. be probably more positive on it. Well, and also the title of this one was called "The Power of Love," which immediately set me into Huey Lewis in the news. Yeah, I mean, because so, I quite liked issue yeah. three, which was like the cities like all turned into parasites. My big mm-hmm. problem with issue, oh, no, that was issue two. My that big problem, two. yeah. My big problem with issue three is that it wrapped that up super quick and felt like it didn't do anything yep. with it, and that upset me. And then all the Lex stuff last issue, I really didn't like. Um, this issue, I think, because it focused on this, it had a focus. It was okay. It's mm-hmm. about Jimmy and Silver Banshee. And Siobhan, it's about that yeah. he wants to help save her, and we get the fun bit where he's got the jetpack from the the Super Corp mm-hmm. people, and that's a great panel. Like and she's singing about bow ties. She's singing about yep. bow ties. Like it was very focused. It told its story. It had a bit of a heart to it, but also a little bit of a fun hijinks side to it because you know Jimmy's got a jetpack. That's a bit silly. Uh, yeah, you know. So I think all well, that, and it's very jimmy olsen right because she's they're going over when they first meet and after she gets revealed that she's silver banshee he's like oh it's okay i turned into a turtle once and then that was the that was the genesis of her her 
pet name for him of Turtle Boy, you know? And so there's just these very little sweet moments in there. So when he does tell Superman, like, no, how much does that jetpack hold? Right? Like, he's coming along for this, and, you know, it's earned. It's not just Jimmy tagging along. So Yeah, and they also reminded us that this uh, pale moonlight uh, rider. Uh, Marilyn Moonlight. That was yeah. the one. Uh, it was really jarring. She just shows up for one panel, does, yeah. like, nothing. Uh, technically two panels you see over the shoulder in the next one. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> it's definitely a tease. Yeah. You know, it's a tease like... that I don't think was needed. Yeah, I mean... Well, no, but he's so... I'm used to him doing this because he does this in his creator and stuff a lot where... He'll, just to remind you of a certain character. I mean, I think they'll, they'll it works the in the context for me because the character, like Lois is talking about how there's a lot of weird things that have popped up recently that yep. need answers and it chooses that time to like show her again. So it's like, right. hey, this is one of the main weird mysteries that we've set up. So it's coming. I think it would have been more effective just to focus on having the moonlight in shot. Oh, sure. Talking about this and have it be a representative thing as opposed to just let's cut to her watching. Her. I, I'm She's just sitting hey, in the moon watching. You don't have to sell me the idea of being more subtle. I always enjoy yeah. more subtle. But, mm -hmm. like, I, I wouldn't mind if, if she had literally any dialogue, anything to do, anything beyond she right. sat there watching right. for two panels. I mean, I get it. I mean, but again, this nail biter, the uh, constantly the butcher showing up in the background like this. As a, almost an ominous. This didn't feel you see, that's like ominous. A thing, right? Of like, oh, he's true. always there in the background, just waiting for the moment. Yeah, true. A different vibe. Maybe his tones are just, you know, he doesn't, he can't, he can't alternate as well. Yeah, well, I think it would also mean more if we had more context for who she was yet. But mm -hmm. right now, she is just, uh, oh, she's a weird looking, you know. It's constantly like, oh, oh, she's coming. Don't worry. Yeah, right. Like, right oh, okay. now, she, and, and we know that she can supercharge Superman. Yeah. Right now, she's just a, a complete question mark. Whereas, if we had like right. a little understanding of her motives or what she was maybe trying to do, it would maybe mean something when we see her. But right now, we don't. I just don't think we need a reminder of this every single issue. I think it's okay to go one issue without having to, having to have these two panels. To be fair, I don't think they mentioned the last issue, did they? No. Did they not? I, I feel like it's been... Since she showed up in Super Charles, I don't think we've seen her since then. With, with the caveat, I did read these two issues back to back, so I may be mixing up, you may like, be. misremembering. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I may be misremembering this moment as and conflating it with something. Yeah, in I, she hasn't been in a while. Yeah, when she yeah, popped up, I was like, oh, it's been since we've seen her. I don't think we've seen her since was, she was popped up. Was it not up. the issue before they were talking about trying to find her? Like, get more information on her? Well, uh, maybe they mentioned her in conversation. I think they mentioned her because cause Clark asked Lois about... Marilyn Moonlight, yeah. and then yes, he talks about the, okay. the boardwalk. You know, because that, that's you know, that was that was issue four, right? That wasn't this one. That wasn't I think this it was one. Three. Yeah, it was no, it wasn't three because it was definitely one was I read. Three? Yeah, I, I guess four. that was maybe the early on in the last issue then. But right. I, we definitely hadn't seen her though since the last time like mm -hmm. she popped up to like help him because like no, no. Yeah. But I'm including them, just kind of bringing her up in conversation as a reminder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, no, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I generally like this one a lot more because it felt a lot more focused. It had a bit of a heart and it didn't feel like it... It didn't feel like it shortchanged me on any of its ideas, which is the biggest problem I'm having consistently with Williamson's mm -hmm. writing is that here's an idea. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's over already. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he really wanted to get into the Jimmy and Silver Banshee thing and the whole point of her running away because if they'll kill everybody I love, if if I don't love you, right? But that statement ends up being that she does love him because she's making the choice. Yeah, it was all actually it's, it's played did, out very well. Did anyone else think it was just a little bit weird that they moved in together before they said "I love you"? That feels like the wrong way around to me. But I don't know what are the youngsters doing nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you admit you love someone before you move in. That feels like the True. way around those steps. Well, is that supposed depends to go. how much you need to save on rent. Right. <laughs> True, maybe they're struggling, then it's more of a convenience right. thing. Well, I mean, did, did it, yeah, I mean, did, did they mention that they moved in, or was she just staying over there? No, they mentioned you know it. I mean? No, she moved in. Yeah. Okay. He calls her roommate. Because he's, he's yeah. moving all his stuff in, and she's like, there's oh. a lot of toys in here. That's right. And he's like, That's it's too right. late now. That's right. Yeah, so they moved in, so. yeah. Well, real, real quick, Connor, uh, what kind of band do you think the Metro the Bansies of Metropolis are? Oh, post-punk. Okay. Hundred percent. Gotcha. Abba. Just just look at them. Abba. <laughs> I love Silver Banshee as a character. I can't remember which Supergirl girl series it was in, but it was where maybe it was New Fifty Two, where her and Kara become roommates. 
oh, and yeah, it, it just yeah. gave, it gave me a whole new fascination. That was the bit where that was the bit where she could learn languages. I think so. I'm sure it was around that that time. I think so, but I just remember her coming in as a Siobhan and it, it's revealed that she has this family curse of of the Banshee and she tries to push Kara away, but Kara won't. And then she ends up becoming almost, she's not even an anti-hero. She just is, you know, the, the curse is a, is a conflict because she doesn't yeah. even fight any of the supers. And I just, I had a new fascination with the character and I feel like this is more akin to that one. I, to where it's like, I think I yeah. retract my ABBA joke i'm okay. going to swap in bgs because now i'm picturing jimmy olsen walking down like saturday night fever <laughs> and adjusting his bow tie as you yeah. know uh that you works know. Just, yeah. it's, it's, you know, imagine imagine staying alive but like with bow yeah. tie bow tie yeah. bow bow tie or bow bow tie there goes. Like, yeah. maybe, that? maybe that was the song they're playing at the maybe. end uh, maybe yeah yeah you know but yeah, yeah but I, just their whole <laughs> their whole dynamic is something i, I really enjoy because it is different and I, I like, I feel like with Superman, I feel like it's Superman and Flash rogues that you can really do the sympathetic thing really well. Right? Yeah, it depends especially, on the character for sure. Yeah. I think, especially yeah. with Superman, you often have to. Yeah. Because otherwise he just beats them to a pulp. Like the, the ones that aren't like, you know, alien, uber strong. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the, the interesting way of talking oh. them down. Otherwise, Superman would just take them out. Right. And that's, that's why Phil Kenny Johnson's Mongol stood up uh, so well right because yes. he's not redeeming yeah. like at all there's yeah. nothing there that you because want he's to. the big physical threat that can just be right be a complete dick bag and, and it's fine that we can beat but, him up but yeah for me solar banshee is definitely one where i just like yeah she she works good as sometimes maybe you know like here she gets manipulated into having to fight superman and she's a little bit overpowered like especially here Right, but at the uh, end of the day, she still, you know, she doesn't want to have to fight Superman. Yeah, I think that's also why it's interesting whenever Joker and Superman cross paths, is because like mm -hmm. Joker just like he can't be talked to, like it's he's, right. he's completely erratic. That's the point but, of Joker. Yeah, yeah but, he, well, but he doesn't want to just take him out because extreme force. Yeah. Well, I, I like the idea too. I forget where I read it, but there's there's some story that Joker does try to deal with Superman, but he doesn't find Superman interesting to mess with. Like he does with Batman. Mm. So there's that dynamic that he has to have it because Batman plays along with Joker more than Superman who would just show up and, you know. Just put a stop to it, yeah. Just put a stop to it. I don't know, know if there's so much plays along with. It's just that because he doesn't have all these extra abilities, he has to go through yeah. the gauntlet that Joker sets up for him. <laughs> right. So, but but yeah, no. And then here in this issue, the double date with, with Lois and Clark, I thought that was all really nice too because it – Williamson is taking his time, right? We're not just whipping through to the next thing. So, and that's one like particular that. issue, sure. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I, and I think the ending works. I think the ending with Lex is set up well that it, you get what it's doing before it kind of makes its point. And I think yep. that feels quite good because it's set up properly. So, I appreciate that. Uh, and obviously, Campbell's art is very good. I think that panel yes. with uh, Jimmy flying with the jetpack with Superman flying next to him looks really, really that's nice. It. Well, yeah. I like when they show up with the sonic disruptors, the, these big old guns from Supercorp. Mm. And Superman goes, yeah, give me that. And then immediately crushes it. And, I, I yeah, Mercy's like not story's... happy. Yeah, yeah, no. And you look at Mercy's face, so that, that entire sequence is really told in the art. So I think that... Yeah, because yeah, he asked... That 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 yeah. for a while. He asked, because he asked for it, and then Mercy's like, yeah, yeah locked and loaded, sir. And then he just yeah. immediately crushes it. <laughs> yeah, but she looks... Yeah, she looks so mad. Yeah, so, that cost yeah, eight uh, million dollars to make Superman. <laughs> yeah, well, use your money better, <laughs> you know. But yeah, that was all good. And then the stuff too with with Lex at the end, the way that Campbell does stuff with the shadows, you know, like the guards being gone, and you know whoever whoever came out and stabs Lex. I think it works you know. particularly well because it's split down the middle. So mm -hmm. on one side you've got the the mood lighting of yep. the the bar. That, that the others are in and this other side it's just this pure like blood red background with like you know yeah. really you know uh really desaturated characters and uh, when you say campbell's off for a bit do you just mean night towers or is he actually off the issue i'm sure we just saw in the solicits that it was someone else on art yeah i don't remember um, i'm asking i don't either yeah uh oh. yeah it's um gleb melnikov on art for issue six okay oh okay well i like gleb yeah. So it's not like it's a bad artist, obviously. No, but it's, it's not Campbell. And those, I'm curious to see how the style changes because Campbell's very, 
very soft, very rounded. It's a very different style. His is but, very action heavy. Yeah. Yeah. So, he he hates like he's pretty on record as hating drawing like talking head shots. Right. He just he wants to draw all the action in the splash pages. Yeah. And that's why he uh, was so good on Robin. So Yeah. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, and this is there's still the uh the annual issue in August, which is continuing yeah. this. That's that's true, yeah. It says at the end it's continuing in the annual. So we do actually get a part of this story, even though it's off for two months for uh, Dark mm-hmm. uh, Night Terrors, let's say. Yeah. All right, Matt, what are you rating Superman issue five? I'm giving this an 8.5. Connor? Uh, I'm giving this a 6.5. It's pretty good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to give it an 8. <laughs> but... Okay. Okay.